to share today is like when you speak in Hmong, what is the power to come with it? And I know a lot of you guys like just like oh it's just a gift, it's Korean Hmong. Oh, actually, it's so much more serious than that. Um, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, we always say Father Abraham. Like um, I I don't even remember his name in Cantonese anymore. But like Father Abraham, 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 Father Abraham. Okay. Um, so that's okay. it, that's that's the one I'm talking about. And God show up to him and say, "You get out of Babylon, and I'm going to call you to somewhere." And just and then he just pack up and go, right? And that was the first time I got um, God totally kind of show up a few times and spoke to him. But that was one. Well, there are two stages in Abraham's life. Well, he wasn't even called Abraham before he made the circumcision, which is God like. And um, so the first stages in Abraham's life, which is God just call him, "Hey, you get out of there!" And then and then he really pack up and go. And God called him righteous. And that's it. Just like every one of us, we before we become a Christian, before we make the prayer and say, "Lord, you be my Lord and my Savior," and that's the first stage. So as soon as we say, "Oh Lord, we we invite Jesus in our heart," then God already called us righteous, okay? and He couldn't love us anymore because He just poured all His love to us. Mm -hmm. But there is second stages in Abraham Abraham's life, and so do Christians too. The second stages of Abraham's life, which is in the well, you can if you want to look at it, you can look at it, and or you can just write that down as a reference. Um, Book of Genesis, chapter 17, which is the covenant of circumcision, and that's the time that when God said, "You know what? I think we need to make a covenant," and God put a mark on Abraham, where biologically life flow from. That's that's the covenant God made with him. And since then, and say God, but God say, well, you do, well, you already did your part, and I'm going to do your, and, and God is going to do his. So it's after that time, you can see God move so much more. Like besides calling him out, God started to like arrange stuff ahead of, ahead of time for Abraham. So, so do Christians. God in New Testament now, today, 2010, God also put a mark where light flow from on our body, which is our tongue. In book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21, the tongues have the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its food, fruit. Um, I forgot the rest of And um, so, in New Testament time, now today, we also have a circumcision, but it's not really like a physical mark on our body anymore. And when for ladies, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we have, but we have a mark, but which is on our tongue. Yeah. So tongues, the gift of tongues, actually, which is Paul strongly recommend. He said, I wish everybody speak in tongue. Yes. That's the reason. Yes. Because once you become a Christian, a piece of God, we, we usually call it call, um, the peace of God called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living inside you. Yes. And when you speak in tongues, it's not it's not you speaking, it's yes. the Holy Spirit yes. inside yes. you speaking. Amen. And when our awesome God created the entire world, He speak into existence. And we so called the daughter and the sons of God. Amen. So actually we operate in the same manner. Yes. So when you pray in tongue, the Holy Spirit inside you speak. So think about when God speak, what will happen? Mm -hmm. It's creating, it's yes. creation. Yes. So when you pray in tongue, and truly you are creating in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I know, like maybe not all of you guys not, like know what, what do you mean by creating in the spirit. When um, let's see, let's give an example. When Abraham, oh, no, not Abraham. When Moses, when he need to um, like um, oh hold on, no, no, no. When when they uh, yeah, when Moses, when he need to feel the the art of the covenant, like God even say, um, okay, you think about it, and I'm going to feel it. No, God take him out, and then show him how does that look like. And that is an example of everything we exceed in this physical world, the chair, the, the chair, the table, everything, is first have to be, like, get created and exceed in the spirit. And as a human being, the sons and daughter of God, when we think, and truly, we are creating in the spirit. And when we when we give a verbal command, and that thing will sooner or later get created. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. So, um, Paul said, when you like, you have to guide every single thought, like keep every single thought in captives. That's the reason, because we are creative beings, and we are the sons.
sons and daughter of God. So if we meditate in, you know, weird, you know, dirty, dirty things, yes. and those those are the things that feed the darkness the power. Yes. But yes. as we meditate in the light, in the love area, we are feeding the angels and everything that you would like really like to see, like all those all those lovely spirits, like you would really like to see, we are feeding them power. So when you and also when whatever you think in the, your heart, your tongue is a really clear yes. revelation of what you have inside. Yes. So from now on, whoever speak in tongue, speak more, speak more. Yeah. Make it like a first priority when you start your prayer life. Because seriously, like who are we that know what to pray in Roman chapter eight? And say, like, oh, because we don't know what to pray, so we have to we groan. But actually, that's the Holy Spirit praying, not you. So we pray in the spirit, and then oh, you know what? That, let's if you have a Bible, open that with me. Roman chapter 8. Because there is one verse, I'm re I'm, I am really sure as a Christian, you all know about it. Like, um, chapter 8, verse 28. You guys, you guys have to know that verse. Okay. Let me, let me read that out. All things God works for the good for those who love Him. Alright, that's verse 28. But, but let's read a couple verses up. Let's start from verse 26. Stephanie, could you do me a favor? Do you want me to read it? Yeah, verse 26. I don't have the Chinese in front of me, so I'll just read it. Yeah, read it in uh, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Amen. 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And if you know anything about computer, if you give a command, the command A, then command then B, results will come out, right? So, in order for verse 28 to really happen, verse 26 and verse 27 have to apply. So basically, it's you don't know what to pray, and the Holy Spirit pray for you and pray with you, and verse 28 then can happen, which is, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Amen. So this is this is something that's seriously really important. And if you don't pray in tongues today, and we would love to pray for you and help you to speak in tongues, because this is something. It's just by faith. It's already in you. It's just a matter of you want to make the last cake, the last cake. Like that. Okay. And um, that's one thing about praying in the spirit. That is one like you can you can do one step more for those who you you already speak in tongue. When you pray in the spirit, when you speak in tongue, try to quiet down, close your eyes, start to be aware of what's going on around you. There was one time when I was in Chicago. Yeah, you, you guys know I play guitar, and I love to just worship by myself even though no one around me. So I pick up my guitar and sing and then I 